The oven. Now here he is, our death-defying acrobat. Nolik, don't! I'm not Nolik, I'm an acrobat. You're going to fall. I'm not going to. Mm-hmm, I see. Every single time with him, it's the same old story. He gets himself into trouble, and I've got to get him out of it. No, no, no! I'm falling! Whoa! <gasps> Hold on! Yeah, I'm just joking. No, like, you're a knucklehead! Zibka! <laughs> <laughs> Tula! We're down here! <laughs> <laughs> Look who's in trouble this time, huh? This isn't funny at all! <laughs> Need some help? We can manage this ourselves, right, Tula? Well, all right then. See you later. We gotta get out of here. <gasps> Tom Thomas's mom is coming. Hi! Hi, Tom Thomas. Hi, Nolik. Are you up for a ride? Because this train's leaving the station. Nice place. It's the oven. It's beautiful in here. And not hot at all. Splendid. It isn't hot right now, because it only started warming up. An oven is a cabinet with a heater. It can get so hot inside that it'll roast whatever's in there. As a matter of fact, that's what ovens are for. People roast meat inside of them and bake things, too. Some ovens burn gas for heat, and others use electricity. They have special electric coils that get red hot and heat everything that's inside the oven. So be careful around ovens. A hot oven can burn you very badly. Oh, it really is getting so hot. We gotta get out of this oven right away! Simka, we're about to get roasted in here. Yeah, inside of a fresh-baked fixie cake. I don't want to. You think I do? You'll fall off. Ugh, you're just like Simka. She told me the same thing, and then she was the one who fell. Right into the batter. Together with Tula. <laughs> what? They both fell in the dough? Oh, yeah. And they're probably still stuck in there, too. Tom Thomas, the cake's fresh out of the oven. You want to try some? <gasps> Where could they be, huh? I don't know. Maybe they're inside the cake. They could have turned into screws. We gotta find them. Hey, what are you doing? Eat. Stop playing. Hey, watch out. You could break your teeth. The first ovens in ancient homes were nothing more than simple fire pits where people cooked on hot coals. Later on, the stove was invented. Every house had a stove made out of stone, clay, or cast iron. People would burn wood or coal in them. These stoves produced enough heat to make soup or bake a cake. And then in the 19th century, the gas stove was invented. Gas stoves are much more practical than wood-burning stoves. One second and the gas is burning. A few more minutes and the water's boiling. They're very convenient, but they can also be dangerous because if the pipes aren't in good condition, there can be an explosion. Today, there are also stoves and ovens that run with electricity. They use electric heating elements for frying, boiling, or baking foods without fire at all. Tom Thomas, I think you'll explode. Ow. But it's so incredibly good. I just can't stop eating it. Hmm. Keep chewing, Tom Thomas. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's as much as I can chew. Hey, what are you guys up to? Uh, up to? We're trying to save you. You're not in the cake? Then how come I was eating all of this? 
I hate cake. Hmm. Uh, maybe it's because that's what good friends do. Yeah, he's a good friend who's got a really good appetite. <laughs> <laughs> Modeling clay. Okay, you're right. It really does, Nolik. Simka! Nolik, what's up? Hi there, Fire. Wanna play some tag with me? I really wish I could play tag, but unlike you, I've got tons of work. Yeah, like what? Well, a bathroom hook fell down, Tom Thomas broke the lamp on his desk, the aquarium has a tube that's leaking, so go and play. I have to get a pack of mat. Oh, oh, oh. I wish I could play tag. Hold on. Nolik, you found a pack of mat. Uh huh. Although I gotta say, it looks a little strange. That's because it's... Let's fix everything before Simka with your pack of mat and my fixie board. This'll be great. So where is that hook that fell down? All right. Nolik, get out some sticky stuff. From where? Obviously, from out of your pack of mat. Mm, but it isn't real. I made it out of modeling clay today. Out of clay? Well, it totally looks real. Long ago, back in the Stone Age, people learned how to use clay to make their dishes and sculptures. But the modeling clay that we use nowadays was only invented about a hundred years ago. Actually, modeling clay is just plain old clay with some ingredients added so it won't dry out. And dyes are mixed in to make all the different colors. There is just no end to all of the fun things you can make out of modeling clay. I got an idea. Go on, turn around. What are you doing? Grabbing glue out of your pack of mat. All right, get up here. Will it stick? Yeah, of course it will. Let's go and fix the lamp. without a real pack of mat. Yours will work just fine. Tadish! So, what else did Simka have to fix? The aquarium! Hop on! <laughs> well, where's that leaky tube? Here! It's leaking at the joint. Yeah, this tube is going to need a lot of modeling clay. Give me the rest of your pack of mat. Sure. And here's a souvenir. <sighs> They're all done. What's all done? <laughs> we already fixed everything. And what did you fix it with? Modeling clay. <laughs> modeling clay isn't going to hold anything. Well, I say it will. Want to bet? All right. What in the world is happening here? Flooding water! You just do as I tell you, without panicking. Did you know it's possible to make modeling clay in your own home? Just write down this recipe. You'll need a cup of flour, a half a cup of salt, and a half a cup of water. Now, mix the salt with the flour and add the water little by little. Mix it together really well. What are you saying? That it looks just like dough? Well, that's exactly what it is. It's just not for eating. It's way too salty. But you certainly can sculpt things out of it. If you want your modeling clay to be colorful, you can add food coloring or watercolors to it. That's it. Your modeling clay is ready to be sculpted. When you're finished, don't forget to let your figures dry in the sun. That way they'll get nice and hard and last you a very long time. <sighs> we almost didn't make it. And did you fix the lamp with that modeling clay? Uh-huh. And the hook, too. That 
That was not a good idea. But it was really quick. Hey, that's true. That's why I want to give a medal to you. You're heroes. For real? Of course you are. And here it is, your medal. But it's made out of modeling clay. Your reward fits your heroic deed. The chain reaction. Tom Thomas, what you doing? Nolik, leave me alone. No, really. What is that? Quit distracting me, will you? Nolik, look at what you've done. I? It's all because you wouldn't quit it. Wouldn't quit what? I was struggling with that thing for half an hour and you ruined it. Mm -hmm. Ugh. When a tiny atom splits, it makes a tiny explosion. And that explosion can start another explosion, and another explosion, and another. And now you've got a chain reaction. And that's how a lot of tiny explosions work together to make the gigantic explosion of an atomic bomb, the deadliest weapon known to man. But atomic energy can also be used for peaceful purposes. For example, nuclear power plants use this energy to produce electricity and hot water. And nuclear-powered icebreakers can break through the thick Arctic ice so ships can sail on their way. There, all done. Nolik, bring him in. <laughs> and now we're going to teach Tom Thomas how a chain reaction can work to make you feel really good. He's coming. On your marks, now. What's going on? No, really? Tom Thomas, watch this! So 
totally awesome. I can't believe what I saw. How did you do that? It was just a real... A chain reaction. What? A chain reaction. The armor. 2, 23, 24, 25. Ready or not, here we come. I heard him. He ran into the hallway. You check the kitchen, Nolik, and I'll check the living room. of that shark. Yeah? Then in that huge vase. Uh-huh. He's all scrunched up in there and laughing at us. <laughs> oh! Simka! There! Did you hear that? He is in there! There's no one. But I know that I heard a hee-hee. You imagined it. Let's go take a look in the bathroom. <laughs> I imagined it. <sighs> it's so stuffy inside this armor. <laughs> <clears throat> the arms got stuck. Where else could he be? <gasps> Who is that? Ah! Sick of the knife, he came to life. Well, how much longer are you gonna look for me? Arbor is very hard clothing worn by warriors to protect them against swords and arrows. People started making armor in ancient times, but the full body armor that knights wore didn't start until the Middle Ages. The armor worn by knights on horses was heavy. It could weigh a hundred pounds, and if a knight got knocked off of his horse, he'd need help to get back up again. By the way, the knights' horses, they wore their own heavy set of armor for protection. Hey, did you turn into statues? Tom Thomas? Is that you in there? Who else? Lift up this visor, I can barely breathe. <laughs> and how come we should do it? Cause I can't, don't you see? My arms got stuck. We see? <laughs> you look funny. Funny to you, but now I'm stuck and I can't get out of here. Come on, help me out, please. <laughs> Chusaka's just what we need right now. Chusaka, what's wrong with you? It's me. Hey, stop it. Help, I can't get up. Come on, let's undo the latches, Nolik, quickly. Thanks for helping me. It was nothing. I couldn't have done it without you. Let's put the night back together. Uh-huh. Before Dad gets back. Protective clothing isn't just for people who are fighting in battles. Travelers put on special nets to protect themselves against mosquitoes and gnats. And beekeepers wear protective clothes, too. If they had nothing to protect them from bee stings, their job would be quite painful. <laughs> Without their protective clothing, it would be impossible for firefighters to go into burning buildings and save people. And how could astronauts go into outer space without special clothing? It's freezing up there and there's no air to breathe at all. And that's why they wear a special costume called a spacesuit when they travel. The spacesuit not only protects astronauts from the cold, but supplies them with air so they can breathe. By the way, the Fixies also wear protective clothing so they can stay safe while they work. Well, there. Did we get it right? It looks like we got it right. Only, where's the helmet? No look when to get it. Tom Thomas! Helmet delivery! Thanks there, Chusaka. Whoa there, Warhorse. Calm yourself down. 
down. There we go. It's all back in place again. Too bad that your knight <laughs> looks like a ballerina twirling around. You see, his arm. Ugh, I can't move it. It's stuck. Here's what we'll do. Give him something to hold. Well, how's that look? Perfect. Now we can paddle into battle. <laughs> the fire extinguisher. So, who can tell me? In the home, what is the greatest danger of them all? Chusaka. Well, dogs are dangerous for us, but what is very scary for us and for humans? Fire! <laughs> Where? I was just answering what you asked us. Although your joke was awful, Fire, your answer was actually correct. Nothing can be worse than getting caught inside a house on fire. Don't know much about chemistry, but I can handle circuitry. That's an interesting idea. I have to try it out. And that's why every Pacamat has a fire extinguisher inside of it. And how do you turn them on? Well, I'll show you at the end of the lesson. Nolik, listen, yell fire. How come? I just want to find out how the professor turns on a fire extinguisher. Forget it, fire. I won't do it for you. Ugh. Fire! Huh? Huh? You again? I was joking. It's a stupid kind of joke, and I want you to leave right now. Actually, I should call your parents to discuss this terrible behavior. Fire is no joke at all. Remember, never fool with fire. Of course, you should never play with matches or with lighters. Everybody knows that. But those aren't the only things that can cause a fire inside of a house. So can a stove or a fireplace. And don't forget electrical appliances, like electric burners, space heaters, and irons. If you act carelessly around any of these appliances, they can cause a fire. And we should never forget to take extra special care with sparklers, candles, and fireworks. Sparks can jump off of them and set fire to highly flammable things like paper, wood, or cloth. So, what do you do if a fire suddenly breaks out? That's right! You call the fire department by dialing the number for all emergencies, 911. Huh? What's going on? No way. No way! Fire? It's burning for real! Fire! What do I do? Oh, yeah! I need a fire extinguisher! Where are you? And that's how a Pacamat can become a fire extinguisher. Do you understand? We understand. There's a fire! It's over there! Enough! You don't know when to stop, Fire. I'm not joking this time. Please believe me, it's there. Hmm. Nice try, Fire. Oh, look, he even used smoke this time. No, Simka, that smoke's from a fire. Uh-huh. I'm sure that this time it's for real. It's the truth. I swear I'm not lying. This time I think it's true. He's not joking. We've got ourselves a real fire here. Tula, Simka, turn off the soldering iron. Uh-huh. Got it! Be careful, kids. You have to stay back here, away from the fire. And what can I do to help? Take out your fire extinguisher! <sighs> Long ago, people used to put out fires with just water or sand. Today, people also use fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers are cylinders with hoses. They're usually painted red, so they're easy to see. The cylinder is filled up with a special powder or foam. If someone needs to put out a fire, they point the hose at the fire, pull out the safety pin, and squeeze the handle. The foam or powder shoots out of the extinguisher and puts out the fire. Our fire extinguishers are just too small for this fire. We have to find Professor Eugenius to put it out. I already did. All right. Where's the fire? Ah. Oh. Hooray! Hooray! We, we put, put out, out the fire. fire. You fixies are just the greatest. Thank you. You saved the whole laboratory. <laughs> Not at all, colleague. 
If not for you, Fixies, I can't even fathom how this could have ended. And what I'm wondering is how the fire got started at all. Fire? I had nothing to do with that. Yeah, sure. Then who was yelling, fire, fire? You know what? Maybe it was you that set the fire. Well, if that's what happened, don't even think about coming back to school without your parents. Colleague, colleague, wait. It's all my fault. I didn't turn off the soldering iron. Forgive me. Now we know whose parents the school should be calling. <laughs> the drums. Now, let's turn it on. It's buzzing. You hear it? I would love to. But the only thing I can hear is Nolik's banging. Nolik, what are you doing? I'm rehearsing my solo. Nolik's the drummer in our rock band. Didn't you know that? Why don't you go and rehearse somewhere else, if you wouldn't mind? Yeah, all right. I just can't work like this. No, like, stop it, please. Oh, my head is just splitting. Professor Eugenius, will you come to the laboratory? There's something very strange in there. What? I'm hearing some kind of awful sounds. You are? I think it's a ghost. Back from the dead. Don't you worry about ghosts, Lisa. I'll check what it is. Hmm, so it's you making the racket. What? I'm just rehearsing. Well, what is it? Uh, don't worry, it's just a piece of equipment rattling. You know what you should do? You should go and practice back at home, my young friend. It's not very hard to make a drum. One way to make it is to take an empty barrel and replace its bottom with a skin made of leather or plastic. If the skin is stretched tightly, the sound can get very bright and loud. Really big drums are usually played with percussion mallets or beaters, while smaller drums can be played with sticks or with bare hands. Instruments that make sounds by being shaken, scraped, or beaten are all called percussion instruments. There are lots of different percussion instruments, like the small hand drums that are called bongos, big shakers with handles called maracas, cymbals made out of metal. Now those really make a lot of noise. And there's tambourines, ratchets, and even spoons. That's right! People can make music using spoons as a percussion instrument. Tom Thomas, do you think I could practice my drumming here? Yeah. Go ahead. I've just got some homework to do. I can do that, and better than you can, too. And what if I play like this, huh? Then I'll go like that, or like that. Let's turn it off. 
Can you hear that? It stopped buzzing. It did. Hey, everybody, it's Nolik. Yo, what's up? So, our noisy ghost is back. I thought you were practicing at home now. Tom Thomas is drumming there. I had to run away. Well, our excursion is over. And now I would just be so happy to listen to your rock group. Reflexes. Add this to that. Now what do you get? Ah, uh, three. Don't you remember? Bark, bark, bark. All you have to do is bark three times. That's too hard a trick for Chusaka. Maybe you could teach her to jump through a hoop. Uh, I already tried. She just sits there. Come on, Chusaka. Give it a try. Try showing her this sugar. Chusaka! Alley-oop! Come on, jump! <laughs> <laughs> See you, Tom Thomas. It's time for us to go to school. See you later, Animal Tamer. Great job, Chusaka. Our lesson for today is on the subject of reflexes. I'll write it here for you. R... What's the lesson? Hmm. Someone's late again. Ah, colleague, my glasses are gone. Are they here? They're right there on your forehead. Ooh, how about that? Forgive me for interrupting. Let's continue our class. And so... Thanks so much. So you turned into screws again. Does anyone know why that is? Because we have to hide ourselves from humans. But you don't have to hide yourself from Professor Eugenius. But we didn't know it was him at the door. Right you are. You had already transformed before you had time to think. And that's what we call a reflex. <laughs> to explain it in simple words, a reflex is when our body reacts to something automatically without needing any time at all to think about it. When we touch something very hot, we instantly jerk our hand back. When we're about to fall, we swing our arms and legs to try to keep our balance. <laughs> Just imagine what would happen if we started thinking how and in which direction to move them. So it's fair to say that our reflexes help to protect us. Whoa! No kidding, they protect us. Uh, my nose itches. Achoo! Excuse me, I didn't mean it. Professor, uh, sneeze. Is that also a reflex? It most certainly is one. Fire didn't want to, but then his nose tickled and achoo! Mm, bless you, too. Thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, uh, do dogs also have, uh, reflexes? Of course dogs have reflexes. All animals do. Yeah! It's something all good animal trainers know. They use the animal's reflexes to teach them tricks. Many humans teach their pets lots of commands, like to bring a ball, to count, or even to dance. But to train a pet, you gotta know what to do. A good animal trainer always has plenty of treats handy. As soon as an animal follows a command correctly, like standing on its hind legs or jumping over a hurdle, the animal gets a treat. And then the trainer makes a unique signal right away, like clicking his fingers or blowing a whistle. After repeating this training over and over, the animal develops a reflex. Once it gets the signal, it carries out the command and then gets a treat. But the most important thing about animal training is to love your trainee and never hurt it. <gasps> Otherwise, no treat will work. Tom Thomas, we just learned in Fixie School how you can train Chusaka. Yeah? With the help of reflexes. With what? Where's Chusaka? Call her. Chusaka, come here. Give her a math problem, a nice simple one. Add this to that. Now what do you get? It's a mirror 
miracle! Three! You got it! No, it's not a miracle. Science is what it is. You know how Chusaka barks whenever she sees a fixie around. That's what we call a reflex, you know. I understand. And do you know how I can teach her jumping? Well, we didn't figure that out yet. Wait a sec, I know how. Chasing fixies. Isn't that one of Chusaka's reflexes? Probably, That's although... great, so let's go and train the dog. <sighs> Nothing's ever too much for a good friend. Chusaka. <laughs> It's pretty tough work being a dog trainer. Knots. <gasps> no, look, there are pirates off the starboard side. Battery, fire. Hey, I'm not a pirate. Why'd you hit me? That's it. I'm tired of playing the wind. Where are my pirates? This looks great. Can I board your ship? And what are your skills? Tons, like protecting the ship and yelling hooray when we win. And how about good sea knots? Can you tie them? <laughs> of course I can tie them. Then tie up our treasure and make sure it's good and tight. Pirates, prepare to attack. I got it. That's done. Good enough. Hooray! It's good and tight. Now can you survive a storm? Without a doubt. <gasps> Whoa! 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 Our treasure! It sunk into the sea. That was my that was my mom's necklace we sunk. I'll pick it all up, don't worry. No, thank you. We'll manage ourselves. He calls himself a sailor. Go and learn to tie some knots. <sighs> Try tying two ropes into a knot. You think it's easy? A badly tied knot will untie itself before you know it. Here's one way to tie it right. First, cross over the two ends like this. Now, to finish the knot, you've got to cross them over again. But not this way. It's got to be in the opposite direction. When it's done, it looks like one loop inside another. This kind of knot is called a square knot. And it won't untie as long as you tie it right. And that's just one of the many kinds of knots a sailor has to learn. Oh! Okay. I knew I could tie it. Now what else is there to practice on around here? I found some more of our treasure. Here's another one. That's 19, but we're supposed to have 20. I know it because I'd counted our treasure. So what happened to the last one? Well done there. So what else could I tie? Perfect. I even remember what it looks like. It's a different color. It's a bright red one. Oh, Mom's gonna notice right away that the red one's gone. I gotta go find it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's on the floor. Who tied my laces together? I was just practicing, sorry. And what else did you tie up to practice your knots? Um, uh, not sure you wanna know. You're funny. Let's go and tie them. that way. I'm scared. She's just staring at her own whiskers, Nolik. And what have you done to her whiskers? Well, I tied them with the square knot. Fire, you're just a blockhead. And why don't you tell us what else you've done? Well, okay. I tied a decoration on her tail. That's where it is. We were looking everywhere for that thing. Fire, go and fix everything you've done. Chusaka, don't run away. Don't be scared. We just want to untie the knot. Sailors have developed all sorts of different knots. Without them, they couldn't control their sails. 
But we couldn't get by without knots on land, either. Mountain climbers use tightly knotted ropes to help them climb and keep them safe. Fishermen tie hooks to their fishing line using special knots. You can't even pitch a camping tent properly without making a knot. When people sew, they tie knots in the thread to hold it in place. And doctors use knots when they stitch and bandage a wound. And a tie wouldn't be a tie if you didn't tie a knot in it. Sneakers won't fall off your feet. And the laces won't drag on the ground if they're tied with a proper knot. But sometimes things can get knotted up by accident. And that's one time when you don't need to know how to tie knots, but how to untie them. All aboard! Like that? Now the only thing left to do is tie a knot. Should I tie it? Are you sure it won't untie? You're joking. Why don't you go ask Chusaka if I can tie a knot like a sailor? The laboratory. to get to the school right away. What did he say? That we've got to get to the school. How come? Did you hear why? I didn't, did you? I wonder if Simka didn't go to school today. Or if Nolik got into some kind of mischief. Oh, I'm worried this is something serious. La 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 la. And that's five, six, Hairstyle. Seven, eight. <gasps> Hi there. Hello, Verda. Oh, where's Grampus? I'm not positive, but go and look in the chemistry area over there. Over in chemistry? Uh, tell us, was Nolik doing anything wrong today? Nolik? He's always fooling around. Right. So we're not here for anything Nolik did. Maybe something awful happened to him. Like what? Well, how about anything? This isn't just a school for fixies. This is a laboratory. The laboratory where Professor Eugenius works is always humming. In the mechanical zone, Professor Eugenius tests all sorts of different devices to see how well they are made. In the chemistry zone, he conducts experiments on the quality and safety of food. In the electrical zone, he repairs electrical devices and checks their safety. Unfortunately, the professor can be absent-minded, and that can cause things in his laboratory to bubble, spark, or even explode. Masya, there's nothing to worry about yet. But how can I not worry? Digit, have you seen Nolik anywhere? Do you know if anything's happened to him? This is a laboratory here. Who knows what could happen to anyone? Like what? What are you saying? Like that. I told you, things happen here. And where? Let's go, uh... quickly! Marcia, no need to panic. Tula, oh. where is so good you're here? We really need your help. What is going on? Ah, oh, there! Oh, we! Grampus! What? Where? In the mechanical zone, there! And Simka Nolik? There! Children. Don't lose your head. Oh! Oh! Asya is my wife and the mother of our children, Simka and Nolik. Masya is a real beauty, a kind and gentle soul, and a wonderful homemaker. She is also a very responsible and extremely skilled fixie. She is our family's expert in kitchen appliances and gadgets. Masya works from morning till night, fixing and cleaning anything that is in need of her expert care. Because she just loves when everything is clean and tidy. But most important for Masya are her children. She takes loving care of Simka and Nolik and tries to protect them from harm. Masya worries about them so much that sometimes her imagination gets carried away with what might have happened to them. Although our little Nolik can get himself into situations that even Masya could never have dreamed of. Tight! We'll save you! 
need to be saved from anything. So it's Simka we need to save, not you. I don't need saving either. I'm fine. And what are you so worried about? Everyone's alive. Then why did you make us come here? I need you to help with a little accident we had. Noli, was this your fault? Oh, no, it's not Nolik's fault. Quite the opposite. He was trying to help me fix it. Papus, we need you to help us with one of the pieces that we couldn't get back in place. This one? <gasps> huh? Uh. Oh, a perfect repair. Huh, that was really the only reason we had to rush here? Why not? There was just no way we could let this wait, so I sent for you. But Fire said... Why Fire? Why is it always fire? How come you had to scare us so badly? I'm not the one who scared you. You did that all by yourselves. The suction cup. <laughs> Where's Professor Eugenius? Did you see him? Not yet. Strange. He told me he'd be here today to conduct some tests. Rampus, right here under the glass. There's a note. Hmm. Dear friends. That means the note's for us. That's because Professor Eugenius can always count on us. I'm off for a conference today. So what should we do? While I'm away, please keep an eye on each of my tests. There's the wristwatch. And where is it? It's right there. Look! How come the watch is in the water? So the fish can know what time it is? No, like, don't be silly. This is the test he made for the watch. You see? It says water resistant right there on the back. That means that water shouldn't get inside of it. I see. So the professor needs to check if it will work underwater. Understand? I, yep, I got it. The watch is working. So now, the doorbell test. We'll go look. It's over there. What's that thing doing? It tests the button to see how fast it wears out. <laughs> to check the quality of appliances, toys, sporting goods, or just about anything, they need to undergo serious testing. Take, for instance, telephones. They need to be tested with both heat and cold because they have to work in places as hot as Africa and as cold as the Arctic. Computers are tested to make sure they can be shaken and rocked, too. That way you can be sure they'll work on a desk at home or outside in the park or while you're taking a ride. Different kinds of products need different kinds of durability tests. For example, athletic shoes and car tires are rubbed and squeezed over and over to see how long they are going to last. Yes, testing's very important. Without testing, a machine or appliance could let you down at the very worst moment. If guests come to visit once a week, and once every month a hooligan comes, pushes the doorbell and runs, then I figure this doorbell will last Right around 400 years. That's long. The doorbell is still working. That's very good. And also, uh... What? I don't know. We need to turn the note over to read the end. But how? Oh, raise the glass, that's all. Hup, hup, hup. We should find a suction cup. A suction cup? Suction cups are made out of rubber or other elastic materials. When a suction cup is pressed against a smooth surface, the air inside is squeezed out. The air outside wants to get back in, and so it pushes down on the cup. The rubber edge of the cup won't let the air leak in, so the outside air keeps pressing down and the cup keeps on sticking. And that's how a suction cup sticks to a surface by using the power of air. Wait a minute. I know where there's a really big suction cup that we can use. <gasps> that 
That's a huge suction cup, Nolik. Steady, steady, steady. Well done, Nolik. Only we need to hurry before air gets under this suction cup and it unsticks. My suction cup will never unstick. Well, let's see what it says here. Simka, you'd better hurry. And make sure nothing gets broken here in the laboratory while I'm away. Huh, and what could get broken around here? Ah, the glass! Look out! Ah! <sighs> yeah, so much for that. And who's going to clean up all this broken glass? <laughs> you don't know? No, Lick. He told us to use that suction no, cup. Simka, she was reading way too slow. Listen, there's no need to fight. I came up with the idea of the suction cup. I should clean this. Come on now, Grampus. We'll clean up this mess. Professor, I still think the suction cup was a great idea. The video call. Turn on the camera right away. It's me, Simka. Just as I expected. Nolik, why aren't you in school? School? It started? No, but you'll be late if you don't hurry. I'm on my way. Simka, is that really your fixie school? Um, well, actually, it's the laboratory where Professor Eugenius works at. He lets us have our school here. Who's that, Simka? Look. Is that the professor? Where? Oh, come on, Tom Thomas. That's the manipulator. Who? Not who. What? It's a mechanical arm. For real? Oh, please show me some of the other things you've got. But how can I show you? Come on, with the camera. Computers and tablets are able to connect with one another through the Internet. That's why you can talk to another person on your computer like you're talking on the phone. And if the computer has a video camera, then it's possible to send not only sound through the Internet, but video as well. That's why it's called a video call. With video calls, it's possible to talk to your friends, to see them, and to show them all the things you can see yourself. All right, take a look. <laughs> Over here we have uh, chemistry equipment. Uh, and over here... Hey, Tom Thomas, it's good to see you. Wow, you flew there so fast. Nola, get out of the way. You're blocking the view of the lab. I am not blocking the view. Stop it, go away. You go away. You go Tom Thomas, what are you watching? Uh, is it time to turn into screws? Too late. He already spotted us. It's just a cartoon about these funny little guys. Can I watch with you? Nah, it's boring, Dad, and I've already seen it. Next, that blue guy. He starts jumping. Watch. Now what? I see you run. Start jumping. Make it cartoony. <laughs> now that red-headed character will sing. Watch. <laughs> la 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 Then she starts dancing. La 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 These guys really are funny. And here are the super fast moves. <laughs> that was funny. I gotta get going. That's all. You can rest. My dad went out. <sighs> I'll get you, Tom Thomas. What are you doing over there, huh? Watching a movie. But why on my computer? Sorry, Professor. Yeah, will you forgive us? So how is it any good? Uh-huh. It's a super funny one. Really? Yeah. You see that boy there? He's gonna start waving his arms around like a maniac. <laughs> He also crows like a chicken. Cock-a-doodle-doo! And now the boy's gonna go in and chew paper. I can't do this all at once. Hmm. 
movie. That's what we're watching here, right? People have always been interested in seeing what's going on outside of where they are. And with the invention of video transmission, it's now possible to see what's going on almost anywhere. Now, without leaving your home, you can see what's happening on another street or even in some far corner of the world. With the help of video calls, doctors can help their colleagues perform complicated surgeries. Teachers can give lessons by video, and scientists can take part in video conferences. With video, you can watch a live theater performance in another country. And even in outer space, an astronaut can feel right at home just chatting away with friends and family. And it's not just for astronauts either. Now almost every tablet and phone here on Earth has video in it. Introducing Tom Thomas. Nice to meet you there, son. And I'm Professor Eugenius, so I guess you're also a friend of the Fixies. Yeah, only it's a secret. My friend, that's a secret the two of us share. And you know, keeping secrets is what friends do. Davies! Chess. Hmm, how about that? <laughs> then I'll play my pawn. And I'll play my pawn. <laughs> We need our spool, and it's missing. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Professor, have you seen it anywhere? The spool? I haven't seen it. We're playing chess, can't you see? Do you like board games? Like dominoes, for instance. Just about everybody has played it. But do you know where it came from? Dominoes was invented by the ancient Chinese. They made tiles and decorated them with dots like on a pair of dice. And this is a game that looks a lot like checkers, but it's a lot more challenging. It's called backgammon. Backgammon originated in Persia, and from there it spread all over the world. But the most challenging game of them all is the game of chess. Chess was invented in India, and today the game of chess is loved in every country. It's played by adults, by children, and even by computers. Chess is a real sport. But the most important thing for playing chess is not the power in your arms, but the power in your brain. Hey, look, I found it! Yeah. Uh, uh, hey, what's going on? <gasps> That's our spool! Please let us take it back. There's something we have to do with it. But we're using it. Can't you wait? It's a replacement for the missing pawn. Uh, oh, Nola can work for a while as the pawn's replacement. Yeah! I can do it. All right. You can take it. And you stand right over here. One, two, three, up we go! Class! So how do we play? You're going to play for the whites. And now I'm going to capture your knight. And we... We're gonna knock over yours. Take that! Whoa, 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 young man. Slow down. It goes back here. Get back to your square. What for? Pawns don't move like that. And how do they move? Only one square per move and only forward. <laughs> of all of the pieces, the little pawn is the weakest. What a mess. So which one's strongest, huh? This. It's the queen. She's the most dangerous threat to the other king. Aw, how come I couldn't be queen? Then that black king would have to deal with me. Oh, yes. <laughs> In chess, each player has a black or white army with eight pawns, two knights, two bishops, two castles, and a queen. All of them work together for their king, trying to protect him while attacking the enemy's king. If the king finds himself in a position where he can be captured, the attacking player says check. And if the king finds himself with nowhere to run from the attack, it's called checkmate. Whoever checkmates the other player's king first is the winner. Move my queen. Yeah. And me, my queen. Huh? Then I'll just capture your queen. Aha! Really? Then I'll just capture yours. Grandpus, should I go now? Not yet. So, do you feel like surrendering? Ha! You're kidding. Do you? No, Lick. Forward. Hooray! We'll 
step aside. Forward! Aha! Next they'll go and capture the knight. He got away. All right, Pawn, and once more, go forward. Gra Grampus, where do I go now? Don't you see the edge? Don't go anywhere. <laughs> now you're the queen. What? The rules of chess say that if a pawn makes it all the way to the other side, he can become anything that was captured earlier. Hooray! Then I'll be the queen, and I'll be the strongest piece in the whole game. Hey, queen, get back here. In case you don't know, this isn't over yet. <laughs> we capture the pawn with the queen. Queen, this is your new place. Check. Check. Huh, yeah? <laughs> Now come to here. Checkmate, my colleague. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> it is, mate. Yeah, I lost. <laughs> Hooray! Tadish, tadish, tadish! <laughs> Professor, we found the missing pod for you. So that means Nola can leave with us. I'm not going anywhere with you. Chess is the greatest game you'll ever play in your life. All you should have seen how I put Professor Eugenius into checkmate. Really? Well, Grampus helped me a little. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was Grampus telling me where to move. <gasps> but I'm the queen now. 